Hello everyone and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Appreciate you checking it out. Today we have another interesting topic and it is part of our ventilator desynchrony series and that is the common ventilator desynchrony known as double triggering. Again, inspired by one of my recent uh, shifts in the uh, medical intensive care unit where we had to work through some vent desynchrony trouble, thought I'd come out with some videos uh, to share with you all. For those of you that follow along on the channel, this is going to be one of those denser medical education videos that target particularly those training to be in or who are in medicine. Obviously, we encourage anyone interested in the topic to check out the video independent of that. Uh, and it's part of our kind of vent asynchrony series. So if we flip back to our YouTube channel, this is uh, on our channel. We just went to our playlist and this is our critical care playlist. And you see our last two videos, uh, basic ventilator waveforms, scalars, and loops. If you are not familiar with ventilator waveforms, scalars, and loops, definitely check out this video first. We will link it in the video description as well as the top right corner right now. Uh, click on that, check that out, and return to this video as that's the foundation for this video. In addition to that, we put out a video just a little bit ago on flow starvation, another common vent dyssynchrony. So check that out. We'll link it in the video description as well. Quick 30-second break for our introduction. Don't go anywhere, though. We will see you right back. Hello everyone and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to provide you with free, interesting, relevant, understandable medical education and news for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. We have weekly videos that we debut Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern Time with bonus medical education videos posted throughout the week. We'd love for you to join the Whiteboard Doctor community and follow along by hitting the subscribe button located in the bottom right hand corner. We also encourage all likes and comments even if it is just to say hello. All our video descriptions contain links for additional related videos that might be interesting so don't forget to check those out. And lastly a quick disclaimer none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. With no further ado, stay well, keep learning, and let's get to the video. All right, thanks for sticking around. So no further ado, ventilator to synchrony double triggering. Also known as premature cycling is another uh, same verbiage or similar verbiage for the same topic. Uh, some people call it breath stacking. Others call it short cycling. So a few different ways to all say the same thing, which is double triggering. Uh, but you might hear different people refer to it as different things. So those are all synonyms. And the way we diagnose this is using the scalars on the ventilator. And these are particularly the pressure time scalar. So pressure on the y-axis, time on the horizontal axis, the flow time scalar, or the volume time scalar. And it's always important to note what ventilator mode you're in when looking at these. And for the sake of this discussion, we're gonna be in volume control mode, um, which is where you choose the tidal volume that you're delivering rather than pressure control mode. If these scalars don't look familiar to you, again, check out the video we linked in the video description, which is introduction to understanding these scalars. If they look good and you're like ready to rock and roll, then you don't need to check that out, um, but that will be the foundation for this video. So the pressure time scalar. Um, you get, when you're breathing on the ventilator, there's a few things that are set. One is the PEEP, right, the end expiratory pressure. And in volume control, then you set the tidal volume. What happens, the pressure control scaler, you always will have this end expiratory pressure, this PEEP. That's why it doesn't go down to zero pressure. You're always a little above zero. And then it starts, initiates the breath, and as you could imagine, when the breath is started to push, the when the volume is being pushed into the endotracheal tube into your lungs, you're gonna get an increase in the pressure those lungs are seeing that then kind of flattens out smoothly and then returns back down to that end expiratory pressure, that PEEP. The flow follows suit, right? You get an increase in flow when that pressure is being delivered, it plateaus, then you get a decrease in flow, but this is still positive flow. This is kind of negative flow, flow going back out. And then what you will see obviously is the flow that was brought into the lungs is going to then flow out of the lungs back to the ventilator. So this is all one breath, right? One breath here, one breath here, and then the volume, no surprise, volume goes up as the breath is being delivered, that volume is being delivered, and then it returns back to zero. Double triggering though, what happens is two breaths are triggered back to back. 
So the first trigger is not surprising, right? You have your peep as we talked about, and then the patient initiates a breath. When they initiate a breath, right, their diaphragm contracts just like you or I, and that decreases their intrathoracic pressure and would fill their lungs, but they have an endotracheal tube in. So the ventilator sees this decrease in pressure when they initiate a breath, this little negative inflection. And then the ventilator says, all right, they want a breath, I'm gonna deliver the breath. So then they start to deliver the normal breath. But when it comes back down, there's it doesn't just go to the normal end expiratory pressure, that normal peep, right? It goes below that, you can see here. And what that is, is the patient is still trying to inspire, trying to continue to take their breath in. So you see that negative deflection again, and the vent says, oh shoot, they want another breath. So it gives them a second breath. And that is all in a row. They trigger two times or double trigger. And that's what this pressure scaler will look like for double triggering. So if we draw it out again, right, the patient's not breathing, they're just at their normal peep, they start to take a breath in. So the pressure gets a little bit negative as their diaphragms contract. The ventilator then says, hey, they want a breath. So the ventilator starts to pump volume in, which increases the pressure. It's a normal breath. The ventilator at this point says, I'm done giving the breath, but the patient is still inspiring in. So you get this negative deflection again, because the patient is still trying to suck air through their endotracheal tube. The ventilator then says, hey, wait, they want another breath. It gives them another breath, which increases the pressure, and then they finally breathe out. The pressure is often higher during that double triggered breath because their lungs are still full of volume from the first breath. They never expired that volume out. Because of that, when you pile more air on top of the air already in their lungs, it's going to lead to an increased pressure as compared to the first breath right? Because you have twice as much volume in the lungs. So you're going to see a higher pressure during that second double triggered breath. And that is what the pressure scaler will look like for double triggering. The flow scaler will also follow a similar suit. So we talked about the normal flow scaler with a particular eye on the kind of a negative flow or the flow returning back to the ventilator. Well, in double triggering, you get the normal flow scalar, right? Flow is going into the lungs and then flow starts to slow down, but you never get this negative flow deflection that you see here because the patient is still breathing in. They're still trying to suck air in. They're not breathing out. So then you get a second flow scalar waveform before you get this big breath back out of the air flowing out of the lungs back to the ventilator. So the flow scaler will essentially just show two fl inspiratory flow waveforms without the normal expiratory flow because that patient has not breathed out yet. And what this will mean for the volume in the lungs we put right here. The ventilator will count this as two breaths because they think they're delivering two breaths. But the expiratory volume the tidal volume expiratory, the VTE, will actually be zero for the quote unquote first breath, right? Because if we look at the first breath, this is, the ventilator thinks this is one breath and they think this is a second breath, one, two. The expiratory volume of this quote unquote first breath is zero because the patient never breathes out, right? We talked about how the patient is still inspiring in which is what prompts that second breath and prompts the double trigger. The flow never goes expiratory. It never goes quote unquote negative on the flow scalar. So the one breath, the quote unquote first breath, the expiratory volume will be zero. And then on the second breath, the expiratory volume will be two times the normal tidal volume, right? Because they took two breaths in. So let's say you're in volume control and it's set to 450. 450 cc is a tidal volume. What you'll see is the first breath, the expiratory volume will be zero. And then the second breath, the expiratory volume will be 900 cc's. And this is about, right? It's about, it's not exact because they got essentially two full breaths without ever expiring. And we'll get into why this can be really problematic. 
So double triggering in general is diagnosed on your scalars as we talked about. And it is caused when the patient wants to inspire for longer than the ventilator is letting them. So their inherent inspiratory time is longer than what the ventilator is set to. So let's say the eye time, the inspiratory time on the ventilator is one second. If the patient says, you can give me that breath for one second, but and I, we're, I'm making these numbers up, but I wanna actually inspire for 1.5 seconds. That is where you start to get double triggering because the ventilator stops the inspiratory flow after one second, but the patient is still inspiring for 0.5 more seconds. So then the ventilator senses that, thinks it's a separate additional breath and gives another breath. All right, so the patient continues to inspire after the vent is done delivering, thus prompting a second breath. The solution for this hopefully sounds straightforward now that we understand the topic. And the solution is that you increase the inspiratory time. Right, so you prolong their inspiratory time. You prolong the time the ventilator is delivering the breath because if they want to breathe in for 1.5 seconds and the inspiratory time is only one second, increasing the inspiratory time to 1.5 seconds will stop the double triggering, right? Because your flow or your pressure scaler, right? That's your peep, patient breathes in, vent says, hey, they're breathing in, delivers a breath. The inspiratory time is the 1.5 seconds the patient wants it. The patient stops breathing and the ventilator stops delivering the breath and then it's done. Rather than peep, patient breathes in, the ventilator gives them an inspiratory time of one second, but the patient is still breathing in. So you get this negative deflection again in the pressure scaler while the patient continues to breathe in and cause negative pressure on the ET tube. The ventilator then says, hey, wait, they want a second breath delivers a second breath before it goes back down, right? So prolong the inspiratory time. Another way to think about this is decreasing the flow you might hear, but in volume control, the flow is essentially a result of the inspiratory time and the tidal volume. If you're delivering 500 cc's over one second, the flow is gonna be 500 cc's per second. Right, So decreasing the flow essentially just means prolonging the inspiratory time. The other thing you can do is you can increase the tidal volume being delivered, right? Because this will also, you know, decrease the flow because if you're, um, I shouldn't say it'll decrease the flow, but if you increase the tidal volume, the amount of that breath, that inspiratory effort that the patient is giving you, you can match their tidal volume they want and thus stop them from prompting that second breath. Now, this gets a little tricky, right? Because let's say someone has severe ARDS and we've talked about ARDS a number of times. It's in our critical care playlist. There's one there. I think we've talked about it a handful of other times in here. So we'll link some of those videos in the video description. But in ARDS, what you're trying to do is target six cc's of tidal volume per kg of ideal body weight. That's one of the ARDS endpoints. So if someone is double triggering, increasing their tidal volume would actually get you off of this six cc's per kg if that's what they were set at. So if you increase them to, you know, eight cc's per kg because they're double triggering, that might not be in line with your end points. So if you were in a tight spot and you have no other options, you could increase their sedation or consider neuromuscular blockade, uh, paralytic in severe ARDS. But this should be a last ditch effort do keep in mind, sometimes there's a happier medium because remember, they're going to be seeing, as we said, double volume when they double trigger like this. So let's say they're set at six cc's per kg, nice and pretty, right? And they're actually double triggering. What they're actually getting is 12 cc's per kg, which is a ton, right? So if you maybe increase them to 6.5 or 7 cc's per kg, it might eliminate their double triggering and they actually would be a lot better off in terms of giving them that uh, appropriate tidal volume for their ideal body weight that ARDS wants us to give. So do keep that in mind that when you're double triggering, oftentimes the patient is getting a lot more tidal volume than what you have them set at. Hopefully that was helpful and interesting. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Definitely check out our other videos linked in the comment 
uh, or sorry, the video description. Uh, we'll also put some in the pinned comment. Subscribe, hit the bell button, leave us a comment even just to say hello. We appreciate y'all. Either way, stay well, keep learning, and we will see you next time.